Do you have a favorite rock or a type? Yeah, I mean, just some some smooth and kind of hard at the same time. Oh, you got to get one out of like, the water. Almost there. The funniest thing, oh, those are a geologist came to me after the show one time, and he was like, I'm a geologist, man. I can tell you what any kind of rock is. And I had a rock, and I liked a lot. What kind of rock this is? He was like, it's a pebble. I was like, well, what? <laughs> what else? Face. Yeah, you, what else? Tell me what year this shit was. Really, what year was this shit, man? It was a pebble. It was in the river. He said a pebble. No, what kind of, what kind of <laughs> rock is it? You can't believe he said a pebble, bro. Yeah, he looked at me and dead my eyes like, it's a pebble. He deserved to get slapped. In the face? Yeah. Because now you're insulting me. Yeah. I mean, what, 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 I mean, what is it, though? But yeah, the rock this is a pebble. Pebble versus a rock. Let me see. That's just like stones and I think everybody's memories of fishing go back to their granddad, especially if you're black. Yeah. Because especially if you in our age bracket, like what, 24 to 32, yo, that's your daddy. Well, you lucky, your daddy was around. Yeah, he was around, he ain't fish. No, nah, your daddy ain't fish. He looked like he was reading. Yeah, dude, hell nah. <laughs> he don't, it's them glasses. My daddy ain't no handyman, bro. <laughs> My dad a smart guy. He could talk to you real good. My dad ain't. My mama was the handy one. Yeah. Yeah, when I was a kid, my mama did all this I ain't shit. handy either, bro. My dad was not no handy shit, bro. But smarter here, just not handy. <laughs> okay, I mean, when I was a kid, he used to, uh, he would tell my shit. I mean, when I, was, when I was younger, my whole my whole dad's side of the family was like scared of like, uh, when I hold my whole dad, I was just scared of like a uh, buzz and shit. What? It was, it was just, I mean, it was just girls. Oh, okay. but, it, but even my dad was scared of them bitches. Your daddy from Florida? Yeah. What part? Jacksonville. What, across the bridge or on the other side? Uh, From like, by, uh, fuck. What, what's the best way to display that shit? By Fernandina? Nah, he from the church. My dad stay in the church. I forget what, well, I know, I forget where the house at, but I know like, you know like Hilltop apartment shit like that? My dad house, my dad childhood house is like uh it's like two minutes away from there. Bro, how how rich is you when you do this on a Wednesday? You got rich as shit. That's a little kid, ain't it? Yeah. He supposed to be in school. What time is it right now? 1 30. He's gonna be the best in the world. School ain't out. Yeah. He's still doing that shit. Damn, that's crazy how the wind come back like that. I mean, how the wind come back like that. Get them waves be out here. Yeah, yeah. Now you gotta let that bitch sit. I will. I'm gonna put this shit out one more time, get it farther. Yeah. Did you know as a as a kid you wanna be a comedian? Oh, uh, this nigga did. <laughs> I done kept, should I get another one? Yeah. We got plenty. All right, bitch. I killed my young nigga. Oh, uh, not that as a kid, I knew I was always funny, though. I was always a class clown. I was always going to do extra shit to get a laugh. Yeah. But I didn't know I wanted to be a comic. I just was like, that's all I really had. I was just all, my dad was very funny. Your daddy is funny, bro. Yeah, I, love to, I love talking to dog. He be, he be really, and he put you on game. Yeah. You got, bro, like, you got one of, you got like a very rare situation, bro, because like, not only do you have talent at a young age and you got the views and the followers and the people behind you, you got a, a support system from your daddy that I've yeah. never seen before. I've never seen that. I only, I still to this day, bro, I don't been on TV and everything. I don't even know if my mom believe in my, my comedy. Bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm old school, man. She yeah. wants you. She the only way she thought you can make it is by going to college. That's that's yeah. That's, I mean, the, uh, that's the generation she come from. Oh, my mom was like that too, but it took. A, I guess she kind of caught on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But my daddy was like that nigga was on board since like. Since, I remember one of your old. first or second kill Tonys. You 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 talked to your daddy. He said if you're gonna do it, go hard. Yeah. That's that's the best piece of advice, bro. That's some great advice. Nah, for real. 
Yeah, and I actually got I got to meet uh, your crackhead uncle for one of your jokes. Yeah, that fool might well, R.I.P. to him. R.I.P. But he might be he might have been one of the funniest people in the world. Oh, there was no way <laughs> he wasn't, bro. No, when we was in Atlanta, and fool was back there. At God, he had a theater. He came to see Cam at a theater, and got uh, house shoes on. Bro, cracking us up. It was like. Well, like, really, like, he, damn, come on, bitch. They see it, nigga. The other one was already half dead. This nigga gotta got some junk in him. Cracking us up in house shoes. Bro, that nigga was, uh, he was always funny as hell, bro. I remember my whole life. Damn, daddy bitch. That my whole, he would come up, he would. Cam gonna learn how to fish before the day over with. On Steve. I'm gonna get this shit back. Damn. Next thing you know, he gonna be calling me like, let's, let's hit the water, dog. Oh, but, I love, but I real shit, like. I look, told you this is peaceful, man. That's fuck. You need peace when you do this shit. Man, you do, bro. People don't understand, man. The other side of funny. Yeah. What's the other side? Death. Right. Craziness. Depression. Yeah. Comedians always got to do stuff to take their mind off the BS. I'm gonna get this shit out and I'll sit my head down. Let's see. Right, though. Got a little algae on it, but it's all good. All right, bitch. That'll do. Oh, shit. Put it right there. Yeah, that's the other side of comedy. Yeah. Depression. Yeah, why most kids, the number one killer comedian is suicide, nigga. Yeah. For the most part. Accidental or on purpose. Yeah. My feature. You knew him, Nick Roach? Yeah. Yeah. I know him a little bit, not much. But it's a, yeah. it's a song called, uh, it's it's both sides of the shit. Like it's uh it's depression coming when you when you when you not doing it. You know what I'm saying? When you not going where you want to go, and it's depression when it coming like when you weird doing it. Cause this shit is just it's, I mean both ways is kind of sad. You ever heard the song uh damn Luke not Luke Combs uh damn it's called Living Look the Dream. Quoting Luke Combs. Look, Texas too long, nigga. What's it called? It's called Living the Dream by Mark, Morgan Wallet. Morgan Wallet. Morgan Wallet. Morgan Wallet. Yeah. Morgan Wallace. Morgan Wallace? It's Morgan Wallace. Morgan Wallace? Yeah, it? Morgan Wallace. Yeah, that nigga that said nigga one time, he's still a good person. I mean, I get it. I, yeah. grew, I grew up white people that said nigga one yeah, time. Yeah, that's why that show really blew my mind when I be hearing that shit. But. Living the dream? Yeah. And the song he said, it's a good ass song, but it's really sad, dude. But like, he said, uh, I signed my lady to be alive for the party, and I'm healing everybody else. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? And people, it, it, dog, when you listen to it, you be like, oh, fuck, like, city to city, state to state. You know That's what the saying? truth, though. That's the truth. That's why I like how you do it. You got everybody around you. You feel me? Everybody around you, you fuck with. So you, because the road, that's why I kind of have, like, with all the following shit like that, with, with you and Tony and them boys, just like, I don't got to go through the lonely part of the road. You know what I'm saying? Because the road, dog, shit is, it, it seems cool in the aspect right. of it before you get into it, but it's like, that shit ain't. No. Nah. Cause I mean, when I first started headlining, you know, like you don't know nothing. Yeah. You don't really got no team. You doing one nighters. You in the city by yourself. All day. All day. And if you don't catch no little chick at the show, you going to bed alone. Back by yourself. So yeah, it get that. I, I remember being depressed. It's depressing. Like this shit is. It's, it's like it's truly depressing. Yeah. Like people don't, cause like it seems it seem all good and well when you when you pop it and it's, and it's going, but like behind the scene, but this is the most stressful shit ever. You feel me? And then when you get a, a little name or anything, there's this pressure. It's like, all right, when can I work out a new joke? Yeah. Cause if they see me work out jokes, oh, he sucks. That's the worst shit. <laughs> That's the worst shit. I'm like, damn, so when can I work out new material? Yeah, when can I get better? The reason you like me now is because I took all them times and I bombed my, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, it's uh I just sneaking in now when I'm headlining. Yeah, that's what I try to do now. Five, but also, six minutes I wanna do it in front of people who don't know who I am. That's what made that's what made me strong, I think. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause now it's cool, like now that we got the fans and shit like that, shout the kill Tony shit, it's like that's the best shit ever. Right. You feel what I'm saying? But it's just like them theaters be crazy. Crazy. And the same, we go on the road and stuff like that. The, the, the cries be dope. But like the reason y'all like me is because people who didn't know who I was, I made them like me. 
You feel what I'm saying? That's how I think. That's how I think I, w- I would like to try to keep getting stronger because it's like a. Uh, because I was in Chicago, I did. I did a laugh factor that wasn't my show, bomb, ate it, did. I did like 10, probably like 112 one, people there. And I fucked up. What I did, first thing I said when I got on stage, I was like, what's up, white bitches? And then. At a spot in Chicago? It was in, uh, it was in Laugh Factory. It was like a dating show that was going on, and I, I did like a little guest spot. I went up second. Well, basically first, before the dating show. I pff, ate it, nigga. Those be feeling good to me, though. I mean, what you need, you need it. You need balance. Yeah. yeah. You can't, I didn't. Did, did, I mean, like, not even two hours later, I went to do the Chicago at the end of this. It sold out. And then it was fucking. Murdered it. it was yeah. Crazy. Did yeah. my first 30. Like, it was crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Went from. I saw Chance the Rapper there. Nigga, Chance the Rapper came to my show. Good shit. Hannibal, so Hannibal came to watch the show. Uh-huh. And then I think Chance, I think Hannibal said the Chance. Chance came to see Hannibal because he went back to me. You know what I'm saying? I brought, I brought Hannibal up. I saw that he got locks now, right? Yeah. He came to the show, he was just like, yeah, I just want to cut check you out, bro. He asked the owner, not the who had one, he said, this can't pass the show, right? He was like, yeah. Damn. Like, what the fuck? That's good shit, boy. Yeah, so that shit was, that shit was dope. He came and he said, oh, yeah, we talked we talk for a minute. And he said some shit that I, that I see you doing, like, like what I said, it was really cool, like, you have your people around you, like, he said, like, build your empire. You know what I'm saying? Like, build other people like you want around you and shit like that. You feel That's what I'm the saying? key, bro. For sure. That's the key. Like, like, like uh, DJ Cali said, major key alert. Yeah. That's the key to this shit. You can't, you can't, you can't be successful if you're around people you don't trust. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Or around people that don't push you to do better. Yeah. You can't be around, yes, man. You got to be around people that let, you know what I'm saying? Right. Tell you when you wrong and shit. Tell me I suck. Tell me that joke suck. Yeah, tell me that was not the set you needed to have. Like, not, oh, yeah, man. You people around, yes, man. You just, you're burning out so fast. It'll be insane. A lot of people don't even know this, bro. First night I shot my special. Uh. I told my crew, I said, that ain't it. Changed my outfit. Came back the next night. Only had two more times to get it. So I had to. Yeah. Totally different outfit, bro. Went out there and killed it. Daniel, my creative director, he calls it halftime adjustments. Yeah. We made them small little adjustments. And it was, that's all you need, bro. But you need people to, to know that. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Not somebody to be like, oh, you know, that was perfect. No, no it wasn't. Right. It was, I mean, if you know it's not perfect. That's what these agents and managers do. Yeah, and that shit, that, that whole smoke. That whole shit be weird to me not coming into it. I mean, that's their job. I mean, hundred percent. And the game is just, the game is weird. Yeah. Cause for a minute, it went from like being like, oh yeah, bust your ass, do this, shit, do this. Now it's like, okay, you bust your ass, now it work paying off. Now it's like, okay. <coughs> now yeah. my people shit, they can eat off you and shit, which is cool. Like, ain't got no issue with that. Yeah. You feel me? Cause that's, I mean, that's, I mean, I was, I was doing it to get somebody to eat on me anyway. That's my parents. So I would help somebody else fulfill that goal for their people. Cool with that shit too. Right. You feel me? But I just gotta be the smart way. You, know you gotta have my best interest on so we can feed everybody so everybody can eat. I think you're gonna be all right, me personally. Thank you. You're gonna be all right, bro. You got a good head on your shoulders. Yeah, my parents, bro. Yeah. My and, parents. You 24, right? Yeah. I was a wild boy. Nigga, I was. The best thing to say to me was just realize earlier that shit, the shit I was trying to do just wasn't for me. You know what I'm saying? I was in LA. Yeah. I was wild. <laughs> I was wild at that 24. I didn't get, I think I matured when I got on Kill Tony. I was like 27. Yeah. I really matured, having Tony in my corner. Yeah, Tony the fucking best. Yeah, it really is. He tells you a lot. You got some? Oh shit. Nah, it's ain't man. Fucking weed grass and shit. A lot of people don't like Tony, but it's because they don't understand him. Yeah, one thing about Tony is like, he fought with you, no, you locked right. in forever, it's over. You locked in, bro. Put a worm on that hoe. With a worm? Yeah. Uh, he got one of the best hearts in comedy. Bro, that's the whole premise of the show. People don't see it. They just see his antics. Yeah, or you, gonna, you just going to say shit on people and shit like that. Yeah, man, it's, it's funny. 
I mean, that's what we do as comics, bro. All we do is talk shit. For real. Comics gossip worse than bitches at brunch. <laughs> well, I was on the phone with my daughter. It was 28, it was a 28 uh, minute Uber ride over here, nigga. I was, I was talking to my homeboy about all the people in the city and shit. About Atlanta. Like, man, this shit happened, this shit going on. And, like, that's what we talk, we talk about. Man, yeah. some shit, it was a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a show in the city. I won't say what it is. But one of the older comics in the city is on the show. And my dad, when, I'm, I'm going, when I go back there, he was like, hey, man, they want to get you on the show. And I just was like, mm, fuck no. Right. Fuck that nigga. Right. And so I remember, calling, I remember calling my dog, like, yeah, but I was just telling him, like, I ain't want to do it. I ain't going to hold you. I'm cool with fish, nigga. I hate worms. Oh, uh, I put that bitch on. Let me see. Let me see if I can power through this shit. The nigga said he hate worms. How you like rocks? Rocks and worms are like. They go together. I don't know. <laughs> but you ever think about I, I, I can't think about like a big ass, like a big ass worm. You feel know what I'm saying? Like a big ass worm kind of scary. That's a snake, nigga. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Like that goddamn bull worm from fucking uh bull worm from fucking uh from SpongeBob. Never seen that shit. I'm looking it up. Bull worm. I got it, dude. Oh. I don't like bull. Oh words. damn! Look at that. Yeah. See? Fuck no. Fuck that shit. Much That's what this nigga is. Nah. That's what that nigga was. I be fishing. I be fishing with blood worms when I be in Florida. Oh, uh, I know what that is. You ever seen them? I think I, I heard of. I ain't never seen one. There we go. Mhm. Mm Look at these. Oh yeah, fuck. Oh, with the arm, with the little legs and shit. Yeah. Mhm. Mm I ain't like when Buddy started moving, I had to man up, though. <laughs> Buddy started moving my hands, I'm like, you fuck out, all right, all right, I'll drop your dumb ass. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'll drop the fuck out your ass. When did you get into rocks? Well, I, it wasn't even just rocks, it was, I like textures. Who? I like textures. I like oh, textures. Yeah, I always been a texture nigga. So it's soothing. Yeah, it was really calming and shit. I carry a stress ball. See, it's about the same thing, it's about yeah. the same thing. They just like some rocks just, when I was a kid, I like, actually, you know, the crazy shit, now that I'm getting a little money and I had window. So, Hotel Pillow was my favorite pillow all the time. Yeah. Because they all had the little, the little corners. And so, I always, every time I get in the hotel room, I take the, the, the uh, I take the goddamn, what that shit, the, uh, the pillowcase off. Yeah. And I just had that bit naked. I like to fit on the corner. <laughs> like, where the corners fit. So, you I had it up. I bought, I bought some. But, like, it's like shit like that, though. Like, I always, like, when I, had, when I had tank top, when I was a kid, had a little, like, the little, um, the little shit where they would, I don't even know what that shit called. But a little, little real thing. A little yeah, real thing. I would call the scene when I was little. I would always have to have, I would always have to have tank top like that. You know what I'm saying? Shirts like anything that I could just feel on. I, it, was like a sense, it was like a sensory thing for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a favorite rock or a type? Yeah. I mean, just some, some smooth and kind of hard at the same time. Oh, you got to get one out like, of order. Almost there. The funniest thing, oh, a geologist came to me after the show one time, and he was like, I'm a geologist, man. I can tell you what any kind of rock is. And I had a rock that I liked a lot. What kind of rock this is? He was like, it's a pebble. I was like, well, bitch, what? <laughs> what else, nigga? Face. Yeah, fuck you, what else? Tell me what year this shit was. Really, what year was this shit made? It was a pebble, it was oh, in the river. He said a pebble. No, nigga, what kind of, what kind of fucking rock is it? You can't believe he said a pebble, bro. Yeah, he looked at me dead in my eyes like, it's a pebble. He deserved to get slapped. In the face? Yeah. Cause now you insulting me. Yeah, I mean, what, 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 I mean, what is it, though? But yeah, the rock shit. What is a pebble? Pebble versus a rock. Let me see. That's just like stones and shit. Now that you're making some money, what's been your biggest purchase so far? Cologne. Cologne? Buying a lot of cologne. Mm-hmm. I buy cologne like crazy lately, bro. My cousin be trying to get me to stop. Why? Oh, cause he got did the cologne at one point, like the fragrance and shit. Tell him let you live, say I'm 24. Nah, he get it, though. God they damn. got your they got you for your worm, dog. For real? You gotta put another one on that bit. Damn. You think a fish got that shit or the fucking wave? Nah, a fish. Oh, these bitches. I think you only hooked it once. Oh, so try hooking it twice. You said try hooking the worm twice? Yeah. Mm, that's gonna be a that's gonna be a feat. I'll put it on there for you. Nah, I'm gonna do it, man. I got. If I want to fish more, I got to learn how to fish. I can't even tie no knot. I'll teach you, bro. That's what stopped me a lot. 
for fishing. Like, I want to for real. I can't tell no nothing for real. They doing it for real. Them niggas been fishing since 1952. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Let's talk about sex. Guys, remember the days when you were always ready to go? Now you can increase your performance and get that extra confidence in bed. Listen up. BlueChew.com. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part is all done online. So no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. Does it work? Hell yeah, it works, man. I use it all the time. Come on, bro. What do you, look at me. I'm a stud. You already know it works. Uh, you could be missing out on the best sex of your life. With Blue Chew, men everywhere are excited to see the postman because when your package has arrived, your package has arrived. They always say first impressions are important. What about lasting impressions? They say there's nothing sexier than confidence, and Blue Chew can help you get the confidence where it counts. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use promo code DAVID at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's it. That's BlueChew.com, promo code DAVID to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. Art doesn't have to be stressful. If you're looking to level up your home quickly, easily, and without breaking the bank, you need to check out Display. Display creates awesome metal posters that just take 20 seconds to install and won't damage your walls. With licensed designs from brands like Star Wars, Marvel, and League of Legends, you truly can't go wrong. Not only will display look awesome in your home, they also make great gifts. You can even submit your own artwork to be turned into a display for something totally personalized. Your poster comes with everything you'll need to hang it immediately. Just pop the included magnet onto your wall, stick your display to it, and you're all set. I got my own customized display artwork from display because I like to fish. I don't know how to fly fish, but I'm going to learn how to fly fish, and that's why I wanted it kind of like a... A vision board. This play is dope. So, uh, thank you, this play, for sponsoring the show. Use code David or click the link in our description to get yourself and your friends this place up to 30% off. This is our special discount that's only available for a limited time. Your discount will be automatically applied to your cart. Head to www.displate.com and use code David to get this place up to 30% off. Bro, ain't it crazy how many women come up to comedians now? Yeah. It's insane. I can ima- I can only imagine what type of hoes R and B singers get. <sighs> Legit, every show if a comedian wants to. Oh, you guys said we yeah we can leave with five six women for sure. And they could end be ladies that came with dudes. Bro, that'd be the worst part. I be feeling bad as fuck. Cause they cause they, it, it make me feel bad. They be disrespecting they dudes. They be disrespecting the dude one, and so I feel bad cause like. Like they probably the dude probably the reason they came to show on the first place. Right, he the only reason. I dated a couple of girls that say they know about me because of their ex. Hey nigga, you just gonna have to go through that, brother. You gotta go through that, my brother. One more time, hook his ass. Chinese. Chinese. Come on, my nigga. I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry, dude. They ain't even way back, ho ass. Mm. That's twice? What? Let me show you. Pass here? Mm. How you feeling bad for these little niggas? Nah, like, we gonna group it. That's what, they don't even know they're alive, bro. Yeah. Probably not. How can they work <laughs> This shit like D-Madness, bro. (laughs) 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 They just existed. They just here. They mean they probably seen real good. D-Madness be crazy when he be like, damn, them lights is bright. What? That shit be having me cry. And that nigga see me be like, darkness. What's up, darkness? Like, how he know you dark skin? (laughs) 
But it was a blind lady I met one time who knew I was short. Man, what? A blind lady knew I was short. It was a blind lady in the wheelchair. She knew I was short, nigga. And I was like, how you know I'm short? And she was like, yo, I can hear your voice. It's closer oh, it to me. Oh, OK. It don't okay. sound like you know that. that, that may- they say them other senses get heightened. Yeah. She's like, I can see you. Right. You right. closer to my ear. Like, damn, right. you bitch. <laughs> damn, you bitch. Man, I want to be tall, at least in the blind. I'm going to tell the man that I said, I'm about 6'5". Yeah. That's, is that average height? Nah. That's little, maybe, maybe a little below. Yeah. I don't know. I don't be tripping. I am what I am. Nah, for real, I can't change this shit no way. All right. At least I'm funny, nigga. I was at a show, a lady called me fat. I said, bitch, I accepted that years ago. Yeah, I don't know why people think that's cool. Now, people call me short, like, I'm gonna be like, oh, no! Bitch, I've been short my whole life. I ain't just found out I was short. Gang violence. Gang violence. They sliding. Nah, for real. That's a life, dude, living on shit like this. Yeah. But you get lazy. Nah. This will become your prison. That's crazy to think about, too. If you start on the road, I think, I think Ron White did it perfect. You know what I'm saying? Maybe a couple hiccups that he made along the way, but for the most part, like, doing it, retiring, being here. Great career. The club, great career, and then be able to go back. Because, like, now he can do what he wants. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like beating the game and doing side misses. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need it, but I'm a... I don't need this, but I love comedy. That nigga in great shape. Like, he beat the game. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, can go back. he don't got to do 160 cities in a year. He can right. do, if he want to, then he can do four. And that's the do goal. Places. I mean, that's the, that's the, that's the main mission. In 15 years, just have it where you only got to do one city a month. Yeah, the, I mean, the way you, you don't got to do two, comedy two, for many. Two arenas. Yeah. But you do comedy because you still love it. You feel what I'm saying? That's why I'm glad you young again making these shows, bro. Yeah. YouTube shows, podcasts. That's the key. And comedy, if you ain't got no podcast, you ain't even no comedian. Nah, for real. <laughs> What's your podcast? What's your podcast, buddy? My daughter be asking me that. She ate. Dad, yeah. what's your podcast called? The kids at school want to know. I'm like, what the hell y'all know about a podcast? Yeah, but podcasts, is, all that shit's huge, man. It's what? It's just huge. Like, it's a yeah. big part of it, you know what I'm saying? It's, better than, it's better than TV. Yeah, way better than TV. Kill Tony doing a million a week. Nigga, that's, we all, like, we're, this is a TV show. Like, you know, yeah. I'm like, oh, I've had to ask shit out when they realize, like, oh, I'm literally on a TV show. Right. Like, nigga, that's crazy. Real fan base. Yeah. Real fan base. It's, it is crazy, bro. It's crazy to think about. Not what are they about to do? I'm curious to see what they about to do. They ain't got no rather. I love oh. people watching, bro. Yeah. They said they got them weight boys, too. I'm going to do that for Cameron Weiss, too, though. Weight Some, boy. Yeah. Sometimes I go to the mall with my hoodie on. Yeah. And a mask. And I just watch people. For real? Just so nobody don't recognize me. I just go watch people. One thing about being like, being like noticeable and black, though, they did I find it funny? You. Nah, they be scared of ass. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got tattoos on my neck and they still don't care. They be scared. Can they be like, is it, is it, a, is it a different person? Yeah. They don't know if it's me or not, you feel me? One time I was somewhere, dude came up to me. I don't know if he was being funny. Yeah. He said, has anybody ever told you you look like David Lucas? And I was like, nah, I've never heard that. I think, yeah. That's stupid. I've never heard that before, bro. Who was that? <laughs> they explain who he was, he? They explain who you was, he? Nah, he can tell I won't try to talk. Oh, okay. When, be, I, when I be out in public, I really be on a mission to go do what I got to do and hey, go home. Slide. I be looking crazy. Polka dot socks on, basketball shorts. When I go out in public to the grocery store, I don't be caring, bro. Y'all gonna get whatever I come in. Hey, I don't even think I be outside like that, bro. I ain't even start doing, getting groceries for real yet. <laughs> Next up, eating sandwiches. What? <laughs> Postmate. Postmates be at, yeah, most for the most part. That's a lot. I was talking to Hans the other day. He said he postmates three times a day. That's crazy. <laughs> that's insane. <laughs> Hans just want to be at home playing Sellers of Catan. Yeah, that's it. 
I be seeing him play that shit. I be trying to, I be trying to figure what the hell going on. I can't on. get into it, bro. That's nerd shit. Is it like, what's, what's, what's going on there, dude? Like, Hans probably didn't go outside that much when he was young. Nah, hell no. Nah. I stayed outside a lot. Yeah, hey, I was outside all the time. When I was a kid, for sure. I, right. live that I had to learn to live. I had to learn to love outside. My granddad used to, he used to use outside as punishment. For real? Did they go outside? Yeah, frozen jug of water and put me and the rest of my cousins outside all goddamn day. Oh, no, nah, that's crazy. <laughs> I would um, say that. I, I like, I used to love being outside. Because my mama house, she would never let me. I, would, I couldn't go up the block. Yeah. Without seeing me, you know what I'm saying? I couldn't, I couldn't be around the corner. If I go around the corner, she on my ass. Cause I'm my only kid, so she real old potato. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. But at my daddy's house, Shit, that nigga be like, hey, nigga, you know what home is, nigga? <laughs> <laughs> That's how daddy's raising. Yeah, he said, just be, just be back, bro. Nah, hell nah. It's, they got them. What's your name? What that shit is? Ozzy? Yeah. C, C shit? They having a concert, ain't it? Huh? They having a concert, ain't it? Shit. Is that that boat? If it's not that boat, then whoever we'll, got no speaker, boy, that shit fire. All right. Got 212 back there. What's that? When you gonna get a whip? Shit. I don't know if I will. Yeah, you, you seem like that type of nigga. Hey, take me over here, bro. Yeah, nah, shit, yeah, for real. I don't think I need, yeah. I swear, bro. And Austin, cause like, we never here. This is my Man. first weekend off and like, and I say off, but I'm still like, oh, but this is my first like weekend out on the road. Yeah. Like a month. Even I, I got a car and I still be making other people drive. Yeah, but I don't. Yeah, I've never been. A, <laughs> I mean, for real? Yeah, I do. Uh, I've yeah. never liked driving anyway. I never enjoyed driving. That shit was never fun to me. It was always stressful. Now I've been in a couple accidents. For real? When I lost my car doing comedy shit, I was driving my dad's car. I, I kind of sat like, I don't think I need another car. I can get another car right now. I also don't want to pay insurance. Come on, insurance going to be through the roof. My insurance high as hell. I was just saying, well, you don't got to take me on the podcast. Yeah, I'll tell you off the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I know my shit. I know my shit to be through the roof. I be speeding, though. Bro, me too. Nigga pulled me over. He was a fan, still gave me a ticket. I'm like, bro. What? Nigga, last night, bro, I don't make this shit a joke. Last night, I'm walking down, I'm jaywalking across the street. A police officer, yo, hey, what's your name? I said, what? He said, what's that? I said, what the fuck? He said, what's your name? I said, what? He said, do you have rocks? I said, oh, my God. <laughs> well, you can't. You got to start with that, nigga. If you a cop, you start with that with me. You don't just, you don't be asking what my name is. As, as you, you know what the fuck you wearing, nigga? Bro, that rock shit took you to another stratus. Oh, it's crazy. Well, that's when I was like, that's, it, it happened yesterday, but that's when I was like, oh, this is different. This is not, this is not real. This is crazy. Oh, a police officer, nigga, was like, do you have rocks? And I was finna get ready to just, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was gonna keep walking. Like, nah, he not for the rest of the room. Jaywalk, I promise you that much. Then we're like, nigga, you got, do you have rocks? That's hard. Yeah. That shit, I try to do you that. You try that same, shit? Yes. I wanna do that shit. You gotta have a lot of core power, bro. For real? Yeah. Yeah. Shit seems fun, dude. White people do some fun ass shit, boy. They, they know how to enjoy life. I mean, cause they always had it. Not saying they always had it, but they always, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shit, cause they can. That's cool as shit, dude. I, I would like shit for, this, for my mama, though. You buy something like this for your mom? hundred percent. Like shit, one day I will. Now they saying would. Damn right. Cause she always wanted to be on the peninsula and shit. She always wanted what? What is it, peninsula? Peninsula? But peninsula, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what the hell this boy saying? She always wanted to be like by the water. Yeah. Where did, she live at? She still live in Florida. What part is she in? Orlando. Yeah. Take over there to Kissimmee. Nah. So this shit would be cool, something like this. I want my mama to be cool. I think I'm gonna stay in Austin for a minute. I think I made this, unless I see I something would, else I like. I would definitely always have a place here. Yeah. What you like, what city you like the most? Uh, Bonita Springs in Florida. I ain't never been there. Right, right below Fort Myers. I ain't never been to Key West neither. 
I need Houses is pretty reasonable there. For real? Mm-hmm. Right on the water? Yeah, you can get one on the water. Let me see that one. The world. Yeah. But yeah, that shit is, uh... Man, I think I'm gonna do that for my mom. My dad, I don't, that nigga just want a car. What kind of wealth he want, Cadillac? Uh, yeah, well, BMW and an RV. Even though his dad can't drive. Why? He can not drive, niggas just shouldn't be driving. <laughs> All his kids can't drive, why well, we can't drive his ass. My dad, my dad is a maniac on the road, boy. Well, he, they, uh, he got a road rage. Not road rage, he just fast. That nigga speed. My mama drives slow, bro. For real? And I don't, I don't know too much about my daddy, bro. I met him three times. Yeah. My mama drives slow and she don't look at the road, bro. She one of them country drivers. Oh, that's crazy. She, she be driving and trying to see who she know. I'm like, Ma, damn. Yeah, my mama got road rage. Yeah, my mama. A little got, bit. My mama, whatever the opposite of road rage is, she got that. She just ripped. God damn, that was good. Also got a heavy weight. Oh. My mama don't give a damn, bro. She be out here sitting in traffic. She don't get frustrated. Yeah. I think that's just. That's one reason, like, bro, driving in traffic. Yeah. Driving to LA will make you never want to drive again. For real? You could be in traffic for two hours to go 30 miles. You got to be just there, man. Nah. And when LA traffic was terrible, I remember when I was out there, I didn't like that shit, bro. Yeah. You, you learn quickly, stay in your area, do yeah. stuff in your area, yeah. go, go to where you need to be immediately. Yeah. And chill over there. Well, could you ever see yourself living in LA? You fuck nah, with? Nah, yeah, no. I can't see myself in LA, New York. No big city. It, it's just you think it's too fast. What? Oh, I don't like big city. I ain't never been a big fan of yeah. big city. My favorite city in Orlando is Gainesville. That's anything about me. Well, not Orlando. My favorite city in Florida is Gainesville. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. You, you, you are uh, the Florida Gators. Yeah, my grandma lived in Gainesville. Yeah. When I was a kid, my mama, I mean, I don't know if she was dead serious or she was playing, but it seemed like she was serious for a minute. So my mama, my great lived kind of in the hood a little bit. You know what I'm saying? My mama one day, she was like, you want to live with your car? I would go to my grandma's house for the summer. Mm -hmm. I go to the hood, I live summer camp my grandma. And uh, I love, my love gave him. All my cousins and shit would come for like a weekend, and I'd be there the whole summer. No, I stay at my grandma. I love, I tell you, I love it over there. That was my, that was, that was my spot, but yeah. you feel what I'm saying? And then uh, my mama asked one day, I was, I, mean, I was going to, I think I was going to the seventh grade. She like, you want to live with your grandma? I was like, yeah. She like, you do? I was like, yeah. She said, okay, we'll figure it out. And I think for a minute she was being serious. Then she really thought about it. It hurt her. No, nah, I didn't hurt her. You don't think so? She thought about it. Like, she put a really, my grandma, at that, my grandma like 80 something now. Uh -huh. At that point, she, my grandma probably like just turned 70. 70. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm like 13. <laughs> I would have what? You would have had kids. I would have had what? I would have had, I would have had kids and been in prison you right would, now, You wouldn't be here right now. Oh, fuck no. If my mom would have, my mom would have let me go to my grandma's house, it would have been, come on, grandma. I'm sure you'd have read me, right? I would have been, you feel what I'm saying? But I would have been one of them kids that stayed at grandma's house. You know what I'm saying? Grandma don't care. She cares, but she just, I mean, she's To a she certain too, extent, she too old. She too old to really, come on, grandma, the best, you feel me? Right, but like right. being over there, I would have, what? Especially when she was. <laughs> Nigga, I wouldn't be this person. In the mix. She was in, in the mix. Outside, boy. I mean, one time my grandma had, it was a, uh, it was a, I seen a, I seen a crackhead walking through with an umbrella. I think your no name, your, your name, when you hashtag crackhead, Cam Patterson just pop up there. Yeah, but crackhead every just running me. I'm a crackhead time, whisperer, nigga. Every time you say that shit, if I hear the word crackhead, I think about you. But what happened with the crackhead? He was just walking down the street, no panel, uh, umbrella, still with the panel, like with the spring, like the, the thing to keep the umbrella down. Yeah. All that shit, no panels. So it was just, it was, it was like something out just of a movie. Sticks. Just the sticks, nigga. Walking through that bit, like it was, <laughs> hey, and it was raining. So he couldn't use the, the panels. It was a, it was a trap out right back into my grand house. But that's, I, kind of, that's kind of what I'm trying to get. All right, that's. Yeah, they way back. Yeah, fuck y'all niggas. Yeah, way go. Huh. Take us with Tyson, all the Negroes over there. They don't live there. They, they, they motherfucker got a lot of money. Oh, yeah. Just they, out sliding on the Wednesday. 
That's the goal, though, bro. Fishing make you feel like an old man. Yeah. You just out here on nothing matter. Out here talking shit. Should have bought some tall boys. Yeah. That's what we need. Remember that, day. We bring some tall boys out here and tape them up. Jolly ass gonna drink me under the table. Oh, he can't, he don't drink no more. When he quit? Then when he moved out here. Nigga been sober since he got here. Where he smoking a lot of weed? Ah, uh, fairly man. He go to the gym a lot, but that nigga changed oh. his whole life, bro. Good shit. That nigga, that nigga changed his life to where me want to go like, I got to start going to the gym now. Now he back being my mentor instead of a nigga I felt like I had to babysit, which is the best thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Stuff. Jolly funny. That's fuck. He funny as hell, bro. Jolly can be in the black in the black circuit, what we like to call it. Jolly can be the king of the chitlin circuit. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Cause he is like uh the nigga, he can talk to both room, but I mean his his voice is more prevalent. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He could be like the chitlin circuit Mike Epps. So the nigga is. It's something. He made me laugh. It's something special about him, bro. The way his mind works. Right, right. Nigga think like a crackhead with some sense. I remember I thought he was a crackhead. He was like, Jolly don't smoke no crack. I'm like, yeah. Oh. He got that energy. I tell him all the time, like, bro, people who meet you, nigga, think you smoke crack at least one time. Bro. <laughs> right, I do, bro, I swear. Like, at least once. You had to smoke one time. And I tell him, <laughs> I tell him all the time, like, nigga, I, no, you had to. He's like, no, I never smoke crack. But I don't know if he's telling the truth or not, because I done called Jolly in a couple of lies, nigga. Jolly, Jolly a lot dead in your face. I remember when Jolly, first, when Jolly was drinking. I mean, before all, before all the kids thought this happened, Jolly came out of the business one time. He had ended up getting on a, he ended up booking a show at Roscoe's, right? Uh oh. Right, yeah. that shit. He ended up booking a show at Roscoe's, right? Yeah. Booked the show, he came back, he ain't promoted at all. Ain't promote shit. He's like, for, it's like some Florida show he trying to put on, right? Ain't tell nobody about it, ain't promote shit. This nigga, we get to the show, I said, how many tickets got sold? He said, oh, we sold 42. I said, what? Say we sold four two two. I said, damn, for real? <laughs> he said, yeah, yeah. I get to the show, it's five people there. I said, Jello, I said, I thought we said you sold four two tickets. He said, nigga, I lied to your fucking face. I lied for no reason, too, no good reason. <laughs> <laughs> That's a crackhead, man. <laughs> he said, I lied for no good reason, too. Tell to see your eyes light up. Tell to see you get excited. Hooked on cars is reeling in so many catches you think you're at a pay leg. They are ripping the hottest seal wax on the market 365 days of the year. With auctions starting at $1 for teams and products like Flawless, National Treasures, Spectra, and Honors, you are sure to get great value with Hook. The little catch and the big catch will have you reeling in one of the RPAs of all the top players in the league. C.J. Stroud, Joe Burrow, Justin Jefferson to Lamar Jackson. No wonder it's easy to get Hook. If you're a football angler like the rest of us, go follow Hooked on Cards on WhatNot and Instagram for the largest variety NFL breaks out there. Who do you think are some of your uh, comedic influences? Uh, I say comedians that we know and then just people in your life. Like so comedians first, comedians. That, like who are your comedic influences? Like we know a lot of the famous or like our friends? Yeah, famous. Uh, Bruce Bruce. Yep. Kevin. Hart. Yeah. And it's uh, Earthquake and uh, what's, his, what's his name? Uh, Earthquake might be one of the hardest Patrice. killers. In Patrice O'Neill, yeah. Yo, Earthquake is. Dog, his special, I'm telling you, his special killing salt. Not killing salt, that day. His special, uh, what is it? The one that Dave Chappelle? Nah, produced? not that one. That was good, but that, that wasn't Oh, the one. Anthem Entertainment with the suit on? Yeah, yeah. the one where he was like, about damn, the about damn time special. Is it when he was talking about he used to work at the dry cleaners? Yeah, yeah, never get, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had that shit on for, yeah, that one. Earthquake always was fresh. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, cool. that nigga, he's a, he, he a big influence. You ever seen him live? No. Nah. No, I don't know who can follow him. For real? I mean, when you doing it that long, that's that's kind of the goal, though, bro. Like, you 30 years in, I'm 30 years in, nobody should be able to follow me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Nobody on their best day should be able to, if I'm 30 years in, I done seen too much shit. That's how Hostman is, bro. I had to follow Hostman one time. Bro. And I, I was just like, I don't know what the fuck to do, man. Hostman, Hostman can turn a room into a room that doesn't want to hear no crazy shit to a room that only wants to hear crazy shit, yeah. which is a fucking skill in itself. It could be a disaster for you, depending on what type of comic you are. Yeah. He's, he's oh, crazy. Damn, that got to fit. <laughs> oh, yeah, put another bit on. He's crazy in conversation. Oh, he's a psychopath. <laughs> Hostman is not a, the Hostman is not right in his head. 
he used to work. We, uh, I did a podcast with him not too long ago. He used to be. A, he used to work at Animal Control. He did the same thing Craig that he did on Friday. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> he said, "Yeah, I was sworn in." What? He said he was sworn in. I like, you got a swear nigga in to work. Catch yeah. a dog? Nah, he is a uh, husband is one of a kind, nigga. So yeah. outside of comedians, who who in your life would say would you say is like the influence? Uh, a couple a dude named uh, Vince Vince Calderon. I used to work with him at Foot Locker, and uh, he was my manager and shit. And that's my dad, my that's like my that's like one of my big brothers for real. You feel what I'm yeah. saying? This nigga so this nigga so dope. He a cop now, so I be like, damn nigga, nigga done switch sides. But he always wanted to be a cop. But he uh he was just he the one told me to do stand up. Yeah. Yeah. He the first person to tell me to do stand up. Cause we were in the Foot Locker, he was my manager, but we would never have our Foot Locker was just always empty. So I just be telling stories all day. That's all I would do. Uh, West Oak Mall. Oh, okay. In Orlando. So I, I just tell stories all day. That's all I did. He be like, nigga, you funny as hell, bro. You, you, need, to, you need to do stand up. Yeah. And I was just like, I'm trying to meet him one more time. Yeah, put that on. And I was like, I was like, uh, I was like, nah, bro, like. I what he know. gonna do when the waves come? What? I wanna see a boat come by. What buddy ass gonna do? Flip. Right? And stop shaking, fuck, nigga. I got your tail. <laughs> so that's good you had somebody tell you to do stand up, bro. Yeah, it was him and then my cousin. That, not even on no, on no stand. He didn't tell me to do stand up or nothing like that. But my cousin Justin, I looked up to him. I remember somebody, there was this joke somebody had said, but it was like, uh, my mama would always ask me, if uh, if, your, if your cousin just about for beer, would you drunk too? And then he, the dude was like, yeah. Because if he drunk, he had a goddamn good reason. <laughs> and that was my, that's how I looked at my cousin. Like, my yeah. cousin up a bridge, nigga, he ain't jumped for no fucking reason. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, so that was my, that, that was like a big brother to me. And I, he would always put on, like, the, special, the people I just named you, even when I was like 11, 13, he was a little older than me. Like, if I was 13, he was like 14, 15. But like, he will put shit on and we'd just sit there and watch it all night. Yeah. Before even I knew I went to stand up, I'd just be like, nigga, I, this, is, this is funny. You know what I'm saying? Like, we we be watching it like for different reasons shit. I used to sneak and watch Comic View. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, that did got me. My mama did not want me watching that. I remember one time, I think I was in the fourth grade, bro. I had got in trouble being a class clown. Yeah. And you know, like I grew up without my dad in my life. Mm-hmm. So um, I think when my uncles came to school, cause my mom was, she had just had it, nigga. She had, mm-hmm. she like, I can't do nothing with this boy. Yeah. I, I might've been, in, maybe middle school. And I, <laughs> and I remember one time my uncle said, should we take you out of regular school and put you in clown school? And I was like, that might be fun. <laughs> that might make more sense. Right. <laughs> and he was like, I remember he said, Do you, should you wear a dunce hat to school? And I'd be like, nah, when I be, when I be doing stuff for my mom, I'd be like, hey, was all the headache worth it? Yeah. <laughs> she told me she wanted a new car. I'm like, damn, bitch. She want the same car I got. For real? Yeah, I was like. I, I, I like when I first got out, you had that joke back to my mom. I won't say it, but that one joke with, uh, I don't know if you tell no more. I remember oh, she you gonna say, when can I get one of these? Yeah, yeah, like, you ain't tell no, you know, yeah, how to tell, you yeah, know how to tell a joke, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I forgot about that joke. That's funny shit. That one joke you was doing when I first got out of Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that shit funny as hell. But nah, bro, it's a, uh, yeah, that's the same shit my mama do. Like, she, I'm like, I play her Rod Wade song, and one time uh, Rod Wade said in the song, he was like, that rap shit you hated, taking us places. And then she was see him over there like it neither. Damn, we missed the canoe. Damn. He probably hit his ass over there too. <laughs> I want this shit just sink it straight to the bottom. Yeah. Hit that ass. With the that that might work. I don't know where they at, bro. We gotta find them. Yeah, that bit dance so just sink it straight to the bottom. Boat full of white people, that's where I need to be at. What's what? up, baby? White people, huh? Little green shirt. Mm. Look like she might like young black men. They all do, man. See, I keep that shit off the fucking bottom. Huh? See, I keep that shit off the bottom. We can't know how to fish a little bit. A little bit. I mean, I'm telling you, the only thing that stopped me from fishing real is I couldn't tie a knot. You couldn't what? I can't tie. I couldn't tie a knot. 
But I always remember fishing, bro. Uh, my granddaddy. I mean, that's, that was my that was one of my fondest memories. Mm. As a kid, and, and when I was a kid, see my my people, my people always subscribe to like I like my granddaddy in a way. My granddad was in the navy and shit. You know people say you like him? Yeah, a little bit. Carlos, they called him Smitty. Uh, I had an uncle named Smitty. For real. Well, he was uh, I mean, he was like that's a boat full of women. Oh, uh -oh. nah, that's a dude on the old that man. Oh. How y'all doing, white folk? Where the drinks? Yeah. Martha. <laughs> but I mean, he, uh, I got a bunch, of, I got a funny ass stuff. When I was a kid, he taught me, he taught me not to lie. Your granddad? Yeah. He but told you not to lie? He taught me, I mean, he not taught me, but he's like, he was, he made me taught me a lesson about lying. So we was all going dating brother, me and my, my cousin, she was young. And then, uh, I, my mama had given me some money and I lost it. Wow. And then uh, he was like, you got your money? I was like, yeah, I got my money. He said, where your money at? It's in my pocket. I said, well, you ain't got no money. I said, I do. <laughs> and then he said, look at your pocket. And I said, well, maybe I don't have no money. And he said, you lost it? I said, yeah, I lost it. He handed me the money. He found it on the floor. I dropped it on the floor. Uh, then he made me write, he made me write on the oh, he made me write on paper. I would not lie. A hundred times. But granted, I thought it was in my pocket. I didn't know it fell out. Yeah, I know, yeah. But I showered, you know, I was like, ah, oh, you got me. And then one time I was at a, he, oh, he had a pool in his apartment complex. There was a bunch of kids out there. And I was just cussing. You sucked that line as a kid. Oh, the worst. But that nigga caught me, that nigga caught me dead in one, one time. Not even like, not even a lie, I was just being bad. There was a bunch of kids, we was around, me and my cousin was at the pool, and I was just called like, fuck this, and pussy, fuck nigga. I was, just, I was just, I was like, I was probably like nine or 10. That's how we was a cousin as a yeah, kid. Yeah, not even making no sense. <laughs> oh, bitch, foot boy, what? That wasn't even a word. Oh, fuck that fuck shit. Oh, fuck that pussy bitch, <laughs> what? Just cussing the cuss. Just saying shit, and then so everybody was laughing. I was standing on the shit, everybody was laughing. Oh, I can tell you the one story, I don't know if y'all got out of sick. I can tell you the one oh, you story. you good, bro, do your thing. We should've bought them tall boy next what? time we gonna bring them. We'll be out here three hours with a tall boy. Let me tell you this shit, nigga. But it was, uh, I, I, everybody was dying laughing, but everybody was dying laughing. And then at one point, nigga just stopped laughing. And so I was like, what? I said, I remember, I remember being like, what the fuck wrong with y'all? <laughs> and my cousin said, turn around. And my granddad right there. <laughs> my granddad would have had a belt. Oh, no, nah, he took me there. He took me, he took me to the room, told me to pick out. So I, I picked the belt. And then he ain't with me that day. He just said, oh, don't be cussing, man. There ain't no point to be cussing, man. Right, right. And that was it. Cool ass granddaddy. Yeah, it was cool ass. My granddaddy was very religious, bro. Yeah. Very. Man, he was strict. That shit was not fun growing up. Yeah. That's probably why I acted out so much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Granddad just strict as hell for no reason. And some people gotta realize it's, it's, a, it's a balance. Yeah, he ain't had no balance, bro. My granddaddy, you know what I'm saying? He raised kids in the in the 70s and 80s. Yeah. And then he here he come with me in the late 90s, early 2000s, trying to raise me like he was raising them back then. Yeah. That's not like, it's different. Oh, I got a cell phone. Yeah, it's different. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't even let me use my cell phone. You don't need that shit, nigga. My mama had got it for me because she used to work nights. Yeah. Yeah. And he would uh and he wouldn't even let me use it. It's like, damn. Now you know this one. I, I ain't never told on no podcast. And this one member I have, me and my me and my cousin stay in, in the same room. My granddad will be over there and shit. And uh, I remember mean, one night I was I was making up these stories uh -huh. about my football, my little league football team, cause they knew I didn't play. Like both of them, both of them knew I did not play. But I'll be like, yeah, we and we played oh, so and so. Oh, huh? oh it's like, shit. Yeah, yeah. Make it feel like you're in the ocean. What? But what happened? But I was like, when we played this so and so team, I was just, I be, I was just saying like just dumb shit, and my cousin was like dying. Like I'm, I'm just feeling that like they were, they were just dying laughing. The next night, uh, my 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 older my older, he was like a little older than me. He was like, hey, you finna do your show again tonight? <laughs> right. And I remember sitting at, I remember sitting at the door, and they made up like these fake tickets. <laughs> and they both handed it to me. And then we got that's to bed, and I bro. told the story again. That's dope as hell. And I was, I, that's my, that's my realest, earliest memories. I remember him saying, like, you gonna do, your, you gonna do your show again tonight? That's funny. That's funny. I don't, I, I'm gonna call the after they remember that shit. Cause I remember that shit for real. You still close with your uh, cousin and stuff? Oh yeah, I'm like my brothers. Yeah. I'm like my brothers. A couple motherfuckers say I'm, I'm still close with my dog. Yeah, I ain't as close to my family as I used to be. 
I mean, bro, the more the, the more you keep rising, you know, you'll see people and it's like, bro, I got two kids, man. Like, what do you want from me? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, I can only do so much, man. I take care of my mama. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, what else you want me to do, bro? Yeah, a lot of people start wanting a bunch of shit like, man, you got to do for yourself. They be asking for crazy. Can I get 50 grand? Like, bro, what kind of money you think I got? You, I'm not Joe Rogan. Yeah, you fear Joe Rogan, though. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, man. That's why I, I used to tell that joke on stage. I said, man, when Rogan signed my deal, my family act like I signed a deal. Shit. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> that shit. For real. I didn't sign no $100 million Spotify deal, bro. I ain't seen a dollar out of that money. What is you talking about? Yeah, people get also. They swear you get, I could just take Rogan and ask him for a million dollar right now. Well, you should be able to. <laughs> That's your nigga. Man, black, black families be so irrational sometimes, bro. Yeah, psychopath. I'm saying, be like, what are, we, what are we doing, bro? Even my granddad, bro, I remember, I remember when he started accepting that, uh, he that started about? accepting the fact that I was a comedian. Yeah. And, uh, cause I started comedy like at 16, 17. Yeah. And I got on the MTV Your Mama show, and then I moved to LA like at 19. And then, bro, I took, I took like a five year break. I just started doing comedy again to like six. So in total, I've probably been doing comedy like seven years. Cause I didn't start doing comedy fishy, again fishy. until like six months before I got on Kill Tony. Yeah. Cause I had a daughter and I was like, man, I, I, like, I guess my dreams gotta be on hold, man. Baby girl, you know, the, her mama started getting in my ear. Like you can't yeah. get no, like, cause you know, it's cool you to fuck around. Yeah, you ain't it's, got no kids. Yeah, we ain't got no kids, you know. But then when you get a kid, you get you a jet. They need stuff, diapers, milk, boy. Now my daughters get whatever they want. That's the game plan, though. But I, I remember, um, I remember when I, my granddad finally, I, I might have been living in LA. I might have been like 19, 20. Yeah, because he had called me. I, I used to do phone calls. Yeah. Like every Sunday after church with the whole family. Yeah. And uh, they pray for me and all that type of stuff. And I remember he was like, what you need to do is go get you a nice suit, some Stacey Adams, and go on David Letterman. <laughs> I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm like that, ain't, that ain't, what are you? <laughs> so just walk up there. Just walk, just walk up there. Yeah, black bottom tennis like. <laughs> they don't understand how they don't work. get it. They, no. they think you can just go up there. Yeah, oh yeah, you gonna see you in that Stacey Adams. And that nice ass suit. <laughs> but who is you, my brother? I remember uh, my high school science teacher I had went back home. Yeah. When I was living in LA, uh, Mr. Uh, what was his name? Cause I remember, bro, he was he was a cool ass science teacher. Yeah. And Cause I remember we had a substitute teacher, and I had cussed her out. But he didn't write me up. I was like, thank God, my mom would have fucked me up. Yeah, she would have flipped. Yeah, boy, I had cussed a substitute teacher out. And, uh, but, but, uh, I, I, cause what I used to always do when substitute teacher would leave a note, I would either stay real, real late. Mm. <clears throat> cause if I had football practice, I'd stay real, real late. I'd come real early to my mom I gotta study or something. Yeah. And go get the note before they come. So then, if I knew I had to go to that class, I just wouldn't show up. So that way, hopefully it died down. Yeah. And all that type of stuff. So, um, yeah, I was living in, oh, I already told that story, nigga, I'm tripping. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Oh yeah, but I ran into my uh, high school teacher. I be getting on them tangents, forget what the hell I was talking about. I ran into my high school teacher, I can't remember his name, but I saw him at Cheddar's, boy. Cheddar's used to be my shit. Cheddar, I ain't never been on. It's straight, the spinach dip. But uh, I remember I seen him at, um, at Cheddar's, and he was like, hey man, how's your entertainment going? I was like, it's, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Cause once I got on the MTV Your Mama Show, boy, I thought I had made it, but that ain't how this shit really worked. Yeah, it's a couple things. Yeah, bro, you gotta keep going. And social media went popping like that in 2010. Yeah. Like we had- I remember Vine. that show too. Yeah, we had Vine, but it wasn't no like, wasn't no, wasn't no TikTok or no Instagram. Uh, we had Facebook. Yeah. But nobody wasn't putting out videos. Maybe Vine. Vine had them little six second videos. Mm. So I remember I, I saw him and he was like, how's it going? I was like, eh, it's all right, man. You know, I'm out here, I'm auditioning. I think I had did some extra work. And he was like, you know what you should do? Go up to Tyler Perry Studios. And I'm like, y'all trying to get a nigga locked up. Yeah, what is you? yeah people. Just drive up there and say what? Hey, nigga, <laughs> I'm a comedian. If, but it, was, if it was that easy. Everybody do it. Yeah, my, 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 my stepmom, I was talking to the last podcast, my stepmom asked me the day she was like a, 
I was back home and she was like, I, I was like, I'm finna go do this mic. And she was like, nigga, you made it. <laughs> What Still you gotta go, work. What are you gonna do this shit for free for? I said, what? <laughs> First of all, I, ain't, I don't think I, I ain't make it at all. And I don't, they don't gotta, I, shit, they gotta yeah. try this shit out. Popularity, clout, is different from made it. Yeah. Like, you, like, you and my dad ain't in a new house right now, so I dare say make it. Made it is when you ain't gotta worry about bread ever again. Ron White made it. Yeah, Joe made Tony it. Tony Hinchcliffe almost has made it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's at that cusp. Yeah. Like, he's big making great money, but I still don't, like Joe Rogan made it. Made, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Burt Kreischer made it. Tom Segura. Them, I think when she was speaking on making it, she was like made it past a certain like level. It's like that. I ain't get past this level cause I, I would do comedy for free the rest of my life. And we still got a long way to go. A long way to go. You know what I'm saying? So just cause this shit happened faster than normal, don't mean I gotta, you know what I'm saying, slow up. I dare swing for the slow up, nigga, cause I, I got it on my wall right now that it's at, at the crib. That bitch just say someone coming. You feel me? Cause when I was uh, when I was busting my ass and I was I would ride my bike to work and I was saying project with my cousin and shit. Nigga, nobody thought I was gonna be here. You know what right. I said I wanted to back of niggas' minds. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But I was right. coming. Right. Right. I was coming. Right. And now we said we fishing and shit. This nigga just like me somewhere else busting his ass. He coming. But when I when he get here, I want to be able to build that nigga up instead of be on the same level as the nigga when he get here. Bro, like, yes. You feel what I'm saying? Then it's like, you could be the big brother. Like, I'm yeah, the same thing you doing to me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I be, bro, even, like, bro, when Cam first came to Austin, I told him, I told him, I was like, bro, don't fall into this shit I fell into. Yeah. Do this, don't do that. But that's 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 the game plan, bro. So by the time somebody like me get here, it's like, well, I can help you out. Like, to so show you where to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. stumble right there. Yeah, that's you what you ain't that's, got to. That's why I fuck the same thing you doing with me. You feel me? That'd be my whole mindset. Man, I always get good advice. You know what I'm saying? Great advice, like nigga. I mean, because it's like at the end of the day, what's the point of what's the point of getting to another level if you can't help the people that's trying to get up there? Okay, that's why I fuck with that's why I fuck Rogan got going on, bro. Cause everybody yeah. here is like on that same mentality. Ain't no bro, it ain't it ain't no like we got a we're three hundred, like the movie. Yeah. All of us is killers. There's no one, there's no, there's no just, oh, this We are one. We are one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, everybody, want everybody else to see everybody, want everybody else to win and shit. Ain't no, oh, I, me, this is me. Right. Man. Everybody put everybody up in the Austin con. That's, that's what I don't miss about the L.A. scene, bro. L.A. just seem fake as fuck to me. Bro, bro. they cut through this hell. They cut, bro. They'll, <laughs> I'll be like, hey, can let's go sign up for that mic. Yeah. And then tell them nigga not to put you up. That's how the L.A. scene is. That's bro. I don't. I don't miss that part. I don't yeah. miss that part of LA scene, bro. That, that shit just don't seem. That's because everybody out there got other motives. Like, like we are like true comedians. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you said, you'll do comedy till you're free. A lot of them out there is doing comedy because that's what their agent told them gets them in TV faster. Yeah. And they will really die for that celebrity shit. They will really die for it. They'll kill for it, man. And that's dangerous. That's fuck. That's dangerous, man. And it's like y'all ain't even y'all ain't even prepared for when it happens. Yeah. I truly believe that everybody gets a shot. Yeah. If you work and do the right work, everybody gets a shot. But the problem is a lot of people ain't ready when they number call. Yeah. And then they fuck it up. Cuz bro, like the best piece of advice I get new comedians you know what I'm saying? They always ask me, like, can you give me some advice? Don't take your ass on Kill Tony till you're ready. Yeah. Because that shit can change your life like that. Like that. And if you put a bad taste in it the first time, you know what I'm saying? I mean, some, but sometimes it's good, dude, because you, you get pulled again and you got to be working and you can see the, the change. But the pro but how long can it take you to get pulled again? Yeah. But as it's... As, I didn't... Yeah. Well, but I don't know. I, it, it probably was more people signing up in L.A. I got on Kill Tony, I think... Uh, a few eight months before I became a regular, mm. and it took me another eight months to get back on. And uh, I had became a door guy, and I don't think I, I may have told the story on podcast. I ain't even want to go. I ain't even want to go sign up for that kill Tony that day. Nigga, same here. Because I was already a door guy, so I'm yeah. like, Man, fuck it. I'm already a door guy. I'm Gucci. So my boy uh, B Tuck, shout out to B Tuck. He was visiting from Atlanta. Yeah. 
And he like, man, come to kill Tony. I'm like, man, I put my name in that bucket every week, nigga. I'll never get it. <laughs> He's like, come on, man, I'll drive. Yeah, I was like, perfect, man, because I only had about twenty five dollars in the bank account yeah. right at the time, and to park might have been twenty dollars. Yeah, you, you you gonna get hungry. And I wasn't known at the comedy store like that to get free stuff yet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like now I get free stuff, just tip. So it's like, man, I ain't. He like, I'll drive. I like bet. And bro, he. I remember, we were sitting in the back. Uh, we were sitting in the back, near the back, near the handicap bathroom. Yeah. And he had fell asleep. For so real. I was like, man, let's go, bro. Let's go to the Improv to see, you know, D-Ray. Yeah. Cause all I used to do over there was we were crack. Yeah. You know, I mean, we roast. Rose for hours afterwards. And uh, he was like, nah, man, we'll stay, because he had fell asleep. And then, like, as soon as he said we'll stay, Tony said, David Lucas. And then as I was walking up, he was like, oh, I know David Lucas. And then that started it. Bro, my, when I got pulled, I think I signed up nine times. That was my, that was my nighttime sign up. And I don't know if I told this to a fool, but uh, I was uh I was doing uh I was doing Dave J shows. I got Dave J. I was doing his show. Dave who? Dave J. I don't know him. He uh uh he got he got show clocked out or something like that. On Monday at, at Creek. I, I was, really I really only be at at Sunset, the Mothership, yeah. and uh Vulcan. But I was doing I was doing that show. And I signed up, but I was like, but I did this shit, I did this shit nine times, bro. I ain't finna, I ain't even finna go back to nothing. I'm just gonna chill over here. Probably try to get another spot somewhere else. And then I had got some good news about something, so I went to go tell White Cam. And he was over there in the alleyway. When I went to go tell White Cam, I got pulled. Destiny, bro. Nah, for real. That's why they call it the bucket of destiny. What? Yeah, cause I'm telling you I wouldn't come back. <laughs> I'm telling you I would, I would not. Cause I was just like, bro, I'm, I, I done did this shit nine times. It's a lot of weirdos out here, bro. You know I man? know it's, bro, I remember, um. Because uh, when we first, when I was, I think I was, yeah, I was still a regular. And when we first moved into the mothership, it used to be hella hot on stage. Oh, so really? I, used, I used to, I used to uh, yeah, I used to come to, because we had to wait on another air condition. Yeah. So I used to, uh, by the time I walk all them steps and shit, I'd be sweating. Because I knew I was about to go up soon, so I'd go to the back to try to get a breeze. Yeah. And, bro, you open that door, and them fucking people that's about to go in there and bomb their ass off with some weird shit, talking about they live in the basement. And they stuff kittens for a living and all that type of shit. It be some legit weirdos, <laughs> creepy people, nigga. And can you imagine them the same people who be in the comments? Yeah, I mean, yeah, man. I, <laughs> yeah, we like, and it's it's crazy because a lot of it's a lot of good comments back there too. But a lot of them motherfuckers be like weird shit, bro. Bro, according to comments, ain't nobody funny. Ain't nobody yeah. good. Man, comments be so fucking. I'm telling you, I, I stopped reading that shit. Recently. Oh, I start reading them too, bro. You can't read them, bro. It'll mess with your mental health. Yeah, Jolly told me some real shit. He was like, it's like you on a mountaintop and they yelling at you. But they're yelling at the bottom. And if you look down there, you can do what you want to. You look down there and yell back at them, nigga. But they just going, they just trying to make their way up there anyway. Yeah. Might as well leave them niggas alone, bro. Jolly even got crackhead proverbs. Yeah. Without being a crackhead. That's crazy. Nah, that nigga a crackhead, man. Yeah, he don't smoke them before. He don't smoke no more, but he never yeah, smoked that before. He smoked them before. When, when he come on the pod, I'm going to make him admit it. He got to, bro. I bet money. I had. I got a cousin. I got a cousin. I asked that one time. I say. I say, hey, cuz you smoke crack for? That nigga look old. I think smoke crack for. He said, you know, everybody smoke crack like once in a while. Every once in a while. You know what I'm saying one, one time. How old is I? Like forty five. Forty two. Forty two. Yeah. Yeah, he smoke crack for. Yeah. Yeah. I forty two. So he only like three years older than Tony. Yeah. Yeah, he smoked crack for. Most definitely, at least one time. Yeah. Oh, actually. Come on, Jolly. Or accident for sure. <laughs> Come on, Jolly. Had to be on accident. Tell us the truth, Jolly. Game violence, man. Game violence, man. Ain't nobody mad at you no more. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> David Jolly, man. Y'all catch David Jolly on tour. He over there. Yeah. He, uh. He died. And he I, don't know where, I don't know what Jolly at. He probably at. Probably, Paducah. He gonna yeah. be at Paducah soon. I'm finna post that shit for him in a minute. Yeah. Jolly be doing uh, comedy at truck stops now, man. What? Hey, but he everywhere, though. Yeah, he really is. He fucking doing it, though. He, he know what's he up. He over there road, though, man. That's some real shit. I'm proud of that nigga. I'm proud of everybody who come out here and chase their dreams, big dog. Yeah. That shit ain't easy. It's not, it's not, especially because we hear this shit, you can people be, tell you not to do shit, certain things, stuff like that. Yeah, and people be like, you ain't, you ain't, people be like, you ain't got no nine to five, you don't know regular life. I'm like, bro, you know how hard this is? This the hard, bro. If you do, if, like, bro, I don't got no sick days. I don't got no paid vacation. 
What I, is you I don't got no insurance. <laughs> you got to buy your own insurance? Yeah, but like, this shit ain't, this shit is. To do shit like this, bro, it take like real, like, it take like real gumption, nigga. Hmm. A good old word, nigga, gumption. That shit take <laughs> gumption, nigga. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Yeah, man, we about to get ready to get out of here. Tell, yeah, the, people yeah. where, tell the people where they can find you at. Uh, Cam So Funny on Instagram with a K. Uh, Cam, S-O-O, and then Funny. And then uh, on Instagram, I mean, on, on, on YouTube, just Cam Patterson. Uh, Cam and the White's coming out soon. So fuck with that. And then um, if you like porn, uh, I got all the porn recommendations on my Twitter. It oh, just yeah. walked up Cam. I don't even post on that bitch, nigga. Just go, I'm, just go to who I follow. It's all the best porn stars in the country, nigga. You know what I'm saying? The top only fan. The top only fan. I know that. Me and my white cam, me and my dog white cam got a podcast. Y'all checking it out if y'all can. Yes, sir. All right, man. Fishing with David Lucas with the very famous Cam Patterson. Locked in for life. Mm-hmm.